Hello everyone. Today let's learn about the trigonometric ratios of angles in all the four quadrants. So friends in previous classes you have already learned the trigonometric ratios of angles from 0 to 90 degrees. Yes, these are some standard angles and their trigonometric ratios. But what about angles which are more than 90 degrees? Do their trigonometric ratios also exist? Yes, they do. And that's what we are going to see today. Now for that, first let's introduce the two coordinate axis. So if this is a 2D plane, this board, then there is a horizontal line called the x-axis and there is a vertical line called the y-axis. Yes. We are aware of that and friends these two axes divide this entire board or this entire plane into four regions or four quadrants. So four quadrants let's name them. This is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, here is my third quadrant and this is my fourth quadrant. So you have to name it in the anti-clockwise direction. Now for the x-axis this is the positive side and the negative side. And for the y-axis here is the positive side and this is the negative side. So with this much information, let's visit each of the quadrants and see how the trigonometric ratios behave. Now before that, let me also write here, this will be 0 degrees, this will be 90, this will be 180, this will be 270 and again when you come back, you will get a complete angle. So friends, this will also be 360 degrees. Now let's start with the first quadrant. Now let's consider any point P in the first quadrant. So let me take this point P. It has coordinates x, y. So let me join this O and P over here friends. Now let theta be the angle that this line segment makes with the positive side of the x-axis. So here is my positive side and I am taking this as angle theta. Now friends note this direction of the arrow. You have to measure theta in the anti-clockwise direction from the positive side of the x-axis. Okay now so this convention is very important. If you measure theta in the clockwise direction, clockwise means what? like this. So if you measure theta like this, your theta will become negative. So currently we are going to only consider positive values of theta. So you have to measure theta in the anti-clockwise direction from the positive side of the x-axis. Now here is our theta but without a right angle triangle we can't proceed with trigonometry. So for that let me drop a perpendicular from point P over here and here we have a right angle triangle. Now this PQ will be y. This will be x and the hypotenuse here, let's take it as h. Okay friends, now in the first quadrant, you have the positive side of the x-axis and the positive side of the y-axis also. That means x is greater than 0 and y is also greater than 0. So how will the different trigonometric ratios behave? Now we know that sine theta is the opposite side upon hypotenuse. Cos theta will be yes adjacent upon hypotenuse and tan theta will be y upon x that is the opposite side upon the adjacent side. Now friends one thing to note is that this hypotenuse over here is the distance and distance can never be negative you know that. So this h will always be positive in all the quadrants but x and y these are the coordinates friends. So if it is on the negative side x will be negative. If it is on the positive side x will be positive. So just remember that. Now here in the first quadrant all my ratios will be positive because everywhere x, y and h are positive. So sin theta, cos theta, tan theta and their inverses, do you remember them? Sin theta is 1 upon cos theta. Let me also write that cos theta is 1 upon sec theta and tan theta is 1 upon cot theta. All these six ratios will be positive in the first quadrant. So what we'll write is all over here and I'll underline A. Okay, so this is the situation in the first quadrant. So now let's leave the first quadrant and go to the second quadrant. So I'll just erase this first part. Now in the second quadrant again I have the point P x comma y. The same way I'm going to join it. Now theta again I'm measuring it from here in the anti-clockwise direction. So this is my theta. Now where is the right angle triangle? Now I need it in the second quadrant. So I will drop a perpendicular from P over here. 
okay now in case you're wondering where is the theta in this triangle well if this whole thing is theta this will be 180 minus theta so theta in some form is present in this triangle and that's what we want okay again this is going to be y this is going to be x and this is my hypotenuse now let's also quickly see what happens to y and x here y will be positive as you can see so y is greater than 0 but my x has come to the negative side so x is less than 0 so what happens to sine theta? Sine theta is y upon h. So sine theta will be positive friends. Now once sine theta is positive, automatically cosec theta will become positive. But what about cos and tan? If you see cos is x, x is negative over here. So cos theta will become negative. Tan theta is y upon x. So x is negative. So tan theta will also be negative. So their inverses will also be negative friends. So here let me write only sine. Okay. So only sine and obviously cosec both of them will be positive. So I'll just write sine because its inverse is cosec. I'll underline this S part. So remember, sine and cosec are positive in the second quadrant. Now let's go on to the third quadrant. I'll just erase it so that it's less complicated over here. So we have arrived in the third quadrant. Let me take any point P x comma y. And here is my origin. I'm going to join it and put a perpendicular here. So this is my right angle triangle. And where is my theta? My theta is going to be like this, friends. See? Just see the way we are taking the theta, right? This is y, this is x and this is h. Now what happens to x and y over here? See, x is already in the negative side. So x is going to be less than 0 and y has also come down. So y is also less than 0. Both are negative friends. So sine theta for the first time is going to be negative because y is less than 0. Uh, obviously, cosec will become negative. What about cos? Cos is x upon h. Again, x is less than 0. So, cos and sec will become negative. Now, if you look at tan, it is y upon x. Both are negative. So, negative, negative gets cancelled. Tan theta will be positive. Automatically, cot will also be positive. So, here in the third quadrant, remember, tan is going to be positive. So let me write tan and underline the t. So till now we have completed three quadrants. Let's go to the fourth quadrant now. So here in the fourth quadrant, let me again take an arbitrary point p x comma y, join it, put a perpendicular. My theta is going to be this friend. See, this is my theta. This is my hypotenuse, this is y and this is x. So in the fourth quadrant, x has become positive. So x is greater than 0, but y is still negative. See over here? So y is less than 0. So let's quickly see what happens to the ratios. Sine theta is y upon h. y is negative, friends. So sine and cosec both are negative. Cos, yes, cos is becoming positive because x is greater than 0. So cos and sec will become positive over here. So let me write it, cos. And what about tan? Tan is y upon x. So y is negative, so tan is negative, cot is also negative. So only cos and sec will be positive in the fourth quadrant. So let me underline this c over here. So this is how the signs of all the ratios change in the four quadrants. Now you can easily remember it by remembering a s t c that is you can use friends there are so many uh, ways in which you can remember I'm just telling you one of them all silver tea cups. So let me just write it down it's all silver tea cups. Okay, so for the first quadrant, all the ratios will be positive. For the second quadrant, only sine and obviously cosec will be positive. In the third quadrant, tan and cot will be positive. And for the fourth quadrant, cos and sec will be positive. So now that we have finished with the signs of the trigonometric ratios, let's also see how the values of the trigonometric ratios change in all the four quadrants. And the best way to study it is through graphs. So let's draw the graph for them. So friends, the backbone of the graph is ready. Now let's start from the first quadrant. Now you already know what is sine 0. Yes, sine 0 is 0 and sine 90. See, this is from 0 to 90. So sine 90 is 1. So these two points I'm going to join with a curve, friends, like. 
axis okay now it's not going to be a straight line remember so it's going to be a curve now what about cos from 0 to 90 what is cos 0 you already know that cos 0 is going to be 1 so I'm going to start here and cos 90 is 0 so it comes here see the curve comes like this. Now in the tan function, tan 0 is 0. So this is my 0 here. Now tan 90 is infinity. Now you can't reach infinity, right? So the tan function continuously increases. And by the time it comes to 90, it reaches a very high value. But still it doesn't touch this 90 degrees. That's very important, okay? So this is how the tan graph will look from 0 to 90. Now let's come to the interesting part. What happens in the second quadrant? Will sine value increase? Will it go beyond 1? Now for that, you need to come back to the definition of sine, cos and tan. See, sine is the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse. So in a right angle triangle, will the opposite side ever be larger than the hypotenuse? No, right? Hypotenuse is always the largest side. So maximum y will reach the hypotenuse, but it will not exceed. So this ratio, friends, will never exceed 1. That's the reason why after 1, sine will come down. Sine value will come down. It will never go after 1. No matter which big angle you take, even if you take sine of 1000 degrees, it will still lie within 1. And what about minus 1? Will it go below minus 1, friends? Again, it will not go below minus 1 for the same reason that the opposite side will never be more than the hypotenuse. So this ratio will never go below minus 1. So always your sign and for the same reason because cos is also adjacent upon hypotenuse, this ratio will also never exceed 1. So cos also will nicely obey. It will never go above 1. It will never go below minus 1. So these two are very obedient functions. You can remember like that. Whereas tan doesn't really follow any rules. It goes through the length and the breadth of the graph. Okay. So after 90, sine's value decreases. But still remember, in the second quadrant, sine is positive. So it reduces, but it is positive. And by the time it comes to 180, sine 180 becomes 0. Okay. Now let's see what happens to cos. Cos in the second quadrant is negative. So it will automatically come this way, friends, here below. And cos 180 will be minus 1. Now what happens to tan is, again, here it will be negative. So it will start from here friends, see minus infinity and it will reach 0, tan 180 will become 0. I hope this is clear, this is how the second quadrant behaves. Now in the third quadrant, tan is positive, everything else is negative. So what happens here, sine will now dip down, it will come below here and it will reach sine 270 will become minus 1. Okay, now in the third quadrant, cos will be negative, but its value will now increase. See, like this, friends. And finally, cos 270 will be 0. What happens to tan is, tan will rise like this, friends, because tan is positive. So, it will rise here and tan 270, it will try to reach infinities. Now, let's come to the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive. So sine, obviously it's here only, right? So it will rise up. Remember, sine will never go below minus 1. So it will rise up and here sine 360 will become 0. What about cos? Cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. So it will go above. It will go above this x-axis over here and cos 360 will be 1. See like this. Tan again, it will be negative in the fourth quadrant. So it will start from here and tan 360 will be zero. So this is how the values of the ratios change in each of the four quadrants. In a future video, we will also see what will be trigonometric ratios of allied angles. So I hope this video has been useful to you. If so, please do like and share the video. Do leave your comments in the comment section below and consider subscribing to Enjoy Math. So till we meet again, take care.